This is Edward Softwater with the Abolition News Network. I'm standing in front of the old slave quarters on a plantation somewhere in the South. These sleeping apartments, as they were called, had little regard to comfort or decency. And as you can see, there are no windows. Old and young, male and female, married and single, all shared a common clay floor with one blanket to share between them at night. Now, these buildings stand as a monument to man's cruelty to man and of a lifestyle truly gone with the wind. And now, on to our next guest. Today is March 30th, 1897. We are broadcasting from an undisclosed location because our guest has a lot of enemies in the Old South who may still have a score to settle with her. She, we are at the home of one of the most famous conductors of the Underground Railroad. She has been a former slave, a nurse for the army, a spy, and a scout during the Civil War. Welcome, please, Miss Harriet Tubman. Hello, Miss Tubman. Hi, Pleasure to meet you. There's a Miss Room. Um, I understand Congress has finally awarded you a pension for $20 a month for your wartime services. Oh, yes. I will, I'm going to use that money every month and send it to my old parents so they can find something to live on for the rest of their life. That's very sweet and considerate. Um, now, you're primarily known for your work with the Underground Railroad uh, under the name General Tubman. Now, how did your career in that field get started? In 1849, I was going to be sold down the river, you know, that Louisiana. So that I escaped to Philadelphia, and, but I have to come back and rescue my father, my mother. So I decided to become a guide, help others, and I joined the under, uh, Underground Railroad. And I always work alone. All right. Um, now, a conductor is different from a station master, correct? Oh yes, there is a difference. The conductor is responsible to uh, carry the uh, fugitive from hideout to hideout. And the station master is responsible to take care of the hideout and sometimes the clothing, food, and sometimes disguise for them. Oh, I see. Now, um, in your career, how many slaves did you help escape? Well, Mr. Softwater, I really never count, but I think maybe 300 or so because I took 19 trips down to Maryland and I, every time I bring some slave with me and we never got caught. Never got caught. Well, that's, that's good. Um, but I understand there was a $40,000 reward on you. Uh, so how was it that you never did get caught? Well, I tell you, I believe in God and I pray every day. And then they, I was always out in the open while they were going out in the, in the wood looking for me. And I was smarter than the bounty hunter and the bloodhound. Now, um, in your book, it says you were an advisor to John Brown. Uh, how close were the two of you? Oh, pretty close, pretty close. Uh, I helped him plan the raid in Upper Ferry, you know, because I know the country of Virginia, I know the slave wood. But that day I got very sick, so that's why I could not go. Yes, he was a tragic figure in history. I actually interviewed him. Um, he believed only in bloodshed and in the Bible. Tell us now, how did you get the nickname Moses? Well, I believe that God helped me free the slave because I told him I'm going to hold on to you, steady to you, and you have to get me through. Okay, well then what do you do if you get close to being caught? Oh, I will create some diversion or some confusion. Do you see this chicken right here? Ah, I see. Yeah, Alieta and Daisy, I can get them out of the cage, and the, the brown one will get wild, chasing after the chicken, and everybody starts screaming, and that's create good confusion. Yes, that certainly would create some confusion. Um, now, it was a real pleasure talking to you here in your home. Well, thank you. But before you go, can I put a plug for my book? Because you let my friend Frederick Douglass on your show, didn't you? Oh, I did. Yes. Uh, by all means, tell us about your biography. I actually wasn't aware that you were friends with Frederick Douglass. Oh, yes. We were very close. He, he wrote me the nicest note. In 68, he told me he doesn't know anyone who had suffered so much hardship than I did try on serving the enslaved people. Um, now, so what did you want to tell us about this biography? Uh, this is it. Uh, the Moses of our people, Alliot Tubman. 
is written by Sarah Bradford. It is published by Citadel Press and copyright in 1868. In that book, they talk about my adventure and make me feel and look like a man, like mm -hmm. a mate. Well, thank you, Ms. Tubman, for taking the time to talk to us. I know you're working on an amendment for uh, women's rights. Uh, it may take 20 years or so, but I'm sure you'll succeed. Well, well don't, you, don't you want to see my chicken? Uh, no, 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 that's, that's, that's okay. This is Edward Softwater with A and... This is Edward Softwater with A... This is Edward Softwater with A and N saying goodnight, and we'll be back right after these messages. <laughs>